Yumba, which means hello in Ngunnawal. For those of you that don't know me, I am Caroline Hughes, director of CIT's Urana Centre, the Centre of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Excellence at Canberra Institute of Technology. I am also one of many Ngunnawal elders that have the cultural privilege and right to provide welcome to country on behalf of our Ngunnawal community. Before I go further, I would like to acknowledge other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that may be watching this film. And I also pay respect to your elders, both past and present, and emerging leaders. I also acknowledge you, our many non-Indigenous friends, that are also watching this film. And I pay respect to you and your ancestors. Providing welcome to country is an important tradition that all Australians should participate in. So in the words of my ancestors, Yuma Yumalandi, Nanayirubi Krulili Manangai, which means hello and welcome to Nanawal country. Or in other words, you may leave your footprints on our land. Thank you. Welcome back to Pressure Cooker. We're up to episode three now and it is anyone's game. Episode one, of course, saw Brad take it out by the slimmest of margins, but in episode two, Yvonne came storming home and we're tied now at one apiece. With that in mind, let's bring out the chefs. Chris. Captain Brad, Captain Yvonne. Brad, a new flavor for you, the bitterness of defeat. How are yeah. you feeling? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good? Optimistic? Pretty good. Optimistic. You're ready to bounce back? Well, we hope so. And Yvonne, sweet victory. That's right. Did you change your strategy up for this week? No, more of the same from last week, I think. More of the same, well, very intense. We've been uh, seeing a lot of student chefs performing very well. They've become veterans, a little too experienced. So this week, we've brought in some fresh faces for the meat grinder. Let's bring them out. Coming into a competition, neck and neck, one apiece. How are you feeling? A little bit uh, excited. Nervous as well. Excited, nervous. They're the same thing. I'm excited to see how that translates into the kitchen. And are you ready to do your captain proud? Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess it's neck and neck, so it's a good chance to prove ourselves. And, yeah, and take the win. <laughs> take the win, prove ourselves. <laughs> we'll send them off to the kitchen and good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And while they're off to the kitchen, we're going to take a look at today's special ingredient, special theme, and we'll even meet the judges. Let's bring them out. Shelley, good to have you back. How are you feeling? Yes, good, good. Who you brought some special guest judges today? I have, yes. We have Simon here, who works in our apprenticeship centre here at CIT. And we have Daniel, who's a chef at Lantern Rooms. Wonderful. Simon, I've been doing some homework on you. You used to be a chef at Courgette. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So what will you be looking for today? Um, I'm looking for a surprise and take it as it comes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And Daniel, fine dining, high quality cooking. What, what's the most important thing for you in a kitchen? Well, at the end of the day, flavours is number one. Let's see the flavours and then the technique that comes along with it. Flavour is the absolute king. Well, of course, to pull out the flavours you need to know what food you're dealing with. We sent our chefs to the Capital Region Farmers Market to pick out something special to cook with today. Let's see how they went. Capital Region Farmers Market. Here, our captains choose their key ingredient, as well as any other ingredients they want to cook with. And of course, we give thanks to all our sponsors at the market who make it possible for CIT student chefs to pull together amazing dishes and also make pressure cooker possible. Hello, how are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing well. Nice, uh, nice spring day. It is. It is. Oh, yeah, very good. What could I interest you in? So we're uh, we're chasing some uh, some pork mints. Right. Yeah. So right. we heard you've got the, the best pork mints in the markets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a, a free range pork mint. Yeah. And it's a beautiful product. Yeah. Oh, well. Excellent. Most smart. So the pigs are raised on pasture the whole time and yeah. moved yeah. around. Yeah. Uh, not confined. Yeah. And yeah. Very high animal happy, welfare. Yeah. Happy lives. They're leading very happy lives. That's good. Yeah. What type of uh, 
What type of uh, pig is it? It's not a Berkshire? It's a Berkshire. Yeah, Berkshire, yeah. 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 And uh, a little bit of Hampshire blood there as well. Okay, very nice. Yeah. And we're, we love selling it. Well, and we're producing it. Well, we're going we're, we're gonna to love to eat it and try oh, I was it. I feel like cooking with it and then yeah. it. <laughs> Thank you very much. No worries. <laughs> oh, hello. We, of course, don't just have a special ingredient each week, but we also have a theme. Shelley, would you do the honours to reveal our secret theme? The theme for this week is street food. Street food? Oh, it's a great theme. Gives lots of scopes, avenue for using different things. So, yeah, it's really good. A lot of street food is, is Southeast Asian influence, but yet again, you know, every country's got their own version. Brad, walking through the street, the waft, the smells, the hot air, what, 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 what comes to mind immediately for you? Oh, happy days. Happy days, yeah. I like to cook, um, cook everything really, like there's not much that I won't cook and don't like. You're going to cook some holiday food, do you think? Yeah, well, we'll just wait and see. Yeah, see how you go in the kitchen. Yvonne, anything straight away come to mind? No, just smells and spices and holidays. It's all very exciting. Well, we have the scene set, we have our theme, we have our contestants, we have our judges. And critically, we have one hour. Let's go. You ready? Yes. Yep. Ready for today? Okay. Secret ingredient. Pork. Pork. Okay. We've got street food, doing cocoa prawns with a rum syrup on banana bread. We're doing steamed pork buns. We're doing cauliflower buffalo bites. And we're doing little baby toffee apples to finish. So guys, we've got pork. So okay. street food. Yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I've got some pakoras and then we've got the Rory John, the live sausage made with the portman, it's a secret ingredient today. And then we've got the hot nukes, which are a kind of Korean pancakey kind of thing with some walnuts and brown sugar inside. I'm trying to work out what they're making, how they're going to do it, and who's doing what. I guess especially because it's a new team as well. Yeah. Like, they probably haven't really worked together, have they? We've only just met today, so it'll be interesting, you know, being in the kitchen with a completely new team. No one, you know, we haven't cooked together before. I, I think we're we'll, gonna. Yeah. yeah, we always try our best, and actually, we we, we work together at other classes, yeah. so we know each other. So we're gonna be a good team. Yes, I think so as yeah. well. Brad's got prawns. Lucky Maria is peeling all the prawns. Lots of different sauces going on and there. Lots of sauces, yeah. But you never know with Brad. He does go a little bit, he tries things, he goes a little bit crazy, so you never know what we'll get today. And then just a little bit like that. Okay, uh, I started with pastry. The, the most challenging was to start in commercial cookery. The timing is different, the rhythm in the kitchen is different. So for me, that itself was really challenging but now I feel comfortable because I've been doing it for a while. Do you miss the kitchen? I do, it's a creative part, absolutely. Mm -hmm. How long ago did you leave? Uh, nearly two years ago now. All right, still yeah. relatively recent though. Kitchens are famously stressful places as well. I imagine moving from a kitchen into, to a desk would be, you know, like moving from the mountains to the beach. Absolutely, which I also did, kind of. <laughs> no, you did the same thing, <laughs> oh, there you go, yeah. We caught up with Simon earlier in the week. I'm originally from Switzerland and I moved to Australia uh, four years ago. I'm working here at CIT as a liaison officer. So I'm mainly um, in contact with employers and apprentices in regards to a very broad spectrum of things. Well, I'm a big fan of apprenticeships just in general and like traineeships. I believe that hands-on experience is invaluable, um, especially in, in trades like like cooking, we have like the, the CIT restaurant where you get first-hand experience of how the industry works. So I'm a big fan of that. During my time I was cooking here in Australia, I created an Instagram account where I presented my plating, I guess. When you work in a restaurant, sometimes you don't get to do too much of the creative and you're more like following recipes. So I kind of compensated at home. Asian food and street food in general is not something that I had a lot of experience with. Because I'm from Europe, I really like the topic because it does trigger like memories in certain areas, yeah. 
The first time I heard about pressure cooker was uh, probably from Shelly. She asked me if I would be interested in judging in one of the episodes. And as I have a chefing background, I was very interested and uh, said yes pretty much on the spot. I think pressure cooker is a really great experience for all of our apprentices, not just the chefs, but everyone that is involved with it. But I think those moments and those experiences um, are the most valuable because you get out of your comfort zone and that's when you start learning the most. The possibility that I go back to chefing is definitely there. Like, I do miss uh, the creative aspect. I don't think there are many jobs where you get to work in a team as closely as you do in a kitchen. Sometimes that can be a curse because if a team doesn't work well together, it's not much fun. But when it does, it's very rewarding and I do miss that sometimes. So what we have there next to the apple, is that a pomelo? So this is the lemon of Shelly's tree. It could be the massive lemons off my tree that we brought oh, wow. in last week. <laughs> is it? Yeah, they were Scary. huge lemons, yeah. Now I'm going to start on the apple toffees. Oh, are apples? Those green, are apples. Green apples, yeah. 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 yeah, green apples. We're using Granny Smith apples and we're we're going to use a Parisian scoop to um to scoop them out. So that's like a little ball. Yeah, so too small? Yeah, so you gotta make sure. Yeah. Mm. So. Okay. Pork mince being roll wrapped mm. up there. Wrapping it in cold fat. All right. And then just roll it up. That's it. Right. And if you don't want a lot of overhang, and you, but just a little bit because it does shrink a bit. What's cold fat though? It's the lining of the stomach. Lining of the stomach. Mm, very, very I just tasty. asked for the, I just <laughs> asked for the viewers at home. <laughs> very tasty. Really weird to work with. Yeah. It's, it's a strange thing, but it's yeah. awesome. We had to have something with pork mints, and I um, actually got the recipe for the sausage from a chef who works here. He used to have a Thai restaurant, and he's done food tours through Thailand and Lao, and he gave us the recipe for this pork sausage, so I thought I'd use that. So it's pretty much like making a sausage. Mm -hmm. Ooh! Do you want tongs? Yeah. You've got tongs, Dave. You're right. I'll be all right. Let's take a look at Olivia's story. Uh, my name's Olivia, and I'm a first year apprentice studying commercial cookery. I've gone through a few different career paths already. I've um, studied visual arts and graphic design at university, and I'm a qualified vet veterinary nurse. It was just sort of a crisis of faith in my chosen career path. So I decided to go back to something I've always been passionate about and um, that's how I wound up getting back into cooking. So I think I might have been seven or eight years old when I first cooked dinner for the family. I chose CIT because despite the distance from where I live, it really was offering the best opportunity to get a full and proper education um, for my apprenticeship. Uh, there, there is a TAFE in the town that I live in, but unfortunately the facilities just weren't really there. The, um, the courses very rarely had enough people to run them. So it's, it's definitely worth the commute coming out to Canberra once a week. I work at the Cascades restaurant in Goulburn. It's uh, part of the Best Western Plus. I, I absolutely love working there and I feel really privileged that this is, you know, my first working environment. I do enjoy studying at CIT. Uh, the teachers are fantastic. Chef Paul has been incredibly supportive and um, informative. Uh, I've made quite a few friends here, which is lovely. It's, um, it's just a wonderful environment. We're halfway through, just 30 minutes remaining. Actually, before you take it away. Yep, yeah, sure. So, the bread. Is that a bread that. Did they bake the bread? I didn't see anyone baking the bread. They're doing a lot of portions, whatever he's doing. Mm. That's good news for you. It's good news. We've got four dishes lots of bits and pieces, lots of chopping, lots of spices and herbs and stuff. So, and as the students aren't familiar with what they're cooking, then, you know. It's obviously challenging for them to remember what's going where, but that's okay. I'm gonna get we'll these see. in the pan, Yvonne. But that'll be the last one up. Yeah, go. So mince side down. Yeah. And just nice and gentle, like, because we've got to make sure that we want the lamb cooked before it's black on the outside. Yeah. Got it? I like how they're doing it everything from scratch. Like yeah. they're using the original items and, and that, that thing is gonna be so nice and crispy. 
Let's see how it... It's going to be good. So what's the function of banana leaves? We're just going to... Uh, just so it won't stick. Yeah. That looks like the dumplings they're making. Mm. Mm. The most challenging thing is uh, pastry. When you make the pastry, you have to measure every single thing exactly. If you don't, you won't make any certain outcomes. We caught up with Aiden earlier in the week. Let's take a look. My name is Heyoung Chan. Uh, I'm 29 years old. I'm from South Korea. And my English name is Aiden. When I searched the English name on the website, Aiden, oh yeah, that's a bit, quite fit to my image, I think, so. I moved to Australia early of 2014. I was, uh, I think I was a good kid, yeah, and I didn't make any big trouble during the childhood. I love my family, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually my mother is good at cooking. So she used to make a lot of food. So that, I think that motivated me to be a chef. I'm a really meat lover that I cook steak as a medium rare. So I love to cook steak. Yeah. This is kind of competition that I, I've never had before. I felt like it's pretty fun and I want to run in my own restaurant in the future uh, with my own recipe. But maybe after 10 years later. <laughs> Contestants have just 10 minutes remaining. Yvonne looks like she's making some kind of dumpling as well. You happy for me to just start going with the rolls? Y yeah. So I'm assuming mm. something sweet, something sweet maybe. brown sugar ish. Mm, Korean pancake. Korean pancake, yeah. You are so neat. <laughs> Do you know that this is food where Aiden comes from, from his home country? Ah. So he's going to tell us maybe that his mum made it better. All but right. That's okay. You can cope with that, and we'll get tips for next time. They should be getting ready for plate ups. Pretty soon. Really soon, yeah. Um, they are actually starting to move a little bit quicker in Brad's kitchen. Do you notice? Yeah. This is what I was telling you about. Now I'm going to stop the Shocking. cooking. Then bring it over here. Where's our apples? In the fridge. In the fridge. Toffee and pork? Oh, that's interesting, interesting yeah. <laughs> That'd be good to know. So that's the apples that she Ah, oh, it's oh, the apples, go. yeah. Toffee apples. We have to be a little bit quick yeah, because quick. otherwise yeah. it's going to be hard and we're not going to be able to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice size on the apples too, just a little bite size. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to break any teeth today, that's good. Watch me this one. And be careful because that's yeah. very hot and it can stick to your hand. Yeah. Just my stomach is starting to make some sound. Eh? Yeah, you're hungry. Yeah, looking right. at the food, looking at all the cooking. I'm always hungry. That's hobby is eating. Yeah. yeah. So Daniel, prawns, lemongrass, we saw all those, I guess, Southeast Asian sauces out before. These are familiar tools in your kitchen. Oh yeah, man. Like, this, these are the most useful stuff that we use in the kitchen, especially when it comes to herbs and spices, it's all about lemongrass and the way they're doing it, bruising it and giving the flavours out. So it is our main stuff in the kitchen, I'd say. We were lucky enough to talk to Daniel in the Lantern Rooms earlier this week. Hi there, I'm Daniel Mark, currently chef at Lantern Rooms. I've been running this show here for a good eight years now. We're pretty much doing Malaysian fusion, doing traditional Malaysian dishes and trying to influence it to make it up to an Australian standard. Our main focus is to give really good and excellent food to customers where they get to get a diversity of what Malaysian dishes is all about. My specialty is, is basically, I'll, I'll put it very simple, what my mum cooks at home, that's my specialty. So whatever dishes that I love eating and love doing, that's what I've um, introduced to 
to put into the dishes in mountain rooms. So, what I say, for example, ota ota is one of our signature dish. It's ota ota. It's, it's more like a, you know you're calling the dish brains. It's direct translation from Bahasa because the way you steam it, it looks like brains. But obviously, we don't do that here. You know, we pre-bake it and look it more a bit more fancier and stuff. But yeah, that's 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 what the signature dish is all about here. It's what I love to eat what my mum would cook for me and you know and then bring it out to here for guests to have a feel of what is back home. You can see how the community in food has grown down here, you know. The competition is pretty wide comparing to Sydney and, and Melbourne, but eventually it will get there. We've had before staff from CIT, obviously they've graduated, they've moved on. I'm so looking forward to working with more apprentices to build them, you know. When they are young, it's very easy to mould them, to cultivate them, to understand what is the industry about. And as we know, Asian food has, has diverse, it's grown so big in Australia, where you know, I would like to put my input to every each one of students. You know, so that they can move on and, and, and have more, more skills. School is what we learn all the basics. Once they come up in this industry, they get the full-on experience. So I would love to share with that with future students, definitely. All right, contestants, only 60 seconds remaining. Yes. Thirty seconds remaining. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time's run out. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. It's been a frenzy of activity, but the chefs have finished and now have to plate up for the judges. Steamed pork buns. The judges loved the pork buns. The presentation was a real hit, but what about the taste? The secret ingredient filling is a hit with the judges. Laos sausage. The judges say that the Laos sausage is professional, cooked nicely, and has a strong lemongrass flavour. Cauliflower buffalo bites. The judges love the aroma of the cauliflower, but would have preferred shallots and fresh greens in the dish. Roti John. The judges are interested in the culture behind the roti john, but what about the taste? Tad on the dry side. The judges think the bread needs to be thinner and is traditionally white bread, not wholemeal. Cocoa prawns with rum syrup on banana bread. Looks like the judges love the syrup and the spiciness of the dish. Unfortunately, the banana bread is not a hit. Pakoras with tamarind dipping sauce. The judges are impressed with the colour of the pakoras. The judges say the colour is wrong due to the type of flour. Will this put Yvonne behind the line? Brad's final dish is baby toffee apples. Could this be the dish that pushes him over the line? The toffee apples are a hit, but unfortunately, a bit too thick. Yvonne's final dish, hotty ox. Will Yvonne's dessert win over the judges? Shelley feels the dish could have had more decorating. Brown sugar and walnuts is a hit with the judges. However, the pancakes are a bit chewy. The time has come for the judges to dish out the results. But who will be served victory? And who is it that will be fed defeat? Well, another episode and another unfed host. But fortunately, the people by my side seem to have eaten very well. So Yvonne's um, pork sausage was probably the dish of the day. Yep, my favourite, very good flavour, um, really nice. Yep, um, at the other end, Yvonne's team probably had the not so favourite dish of the day as well. The roti john was quite dry. Um, and I think that's probably because it was a wholemeal baguette instead of a white one. So it kind of soaked up all the, all the goodness. Yeah, but otherwise, really good. Brad's team, um, Brad, yeah, you have the pork buns. 
was were absolutely beautiful. Um, Aiden, did you have a little hand in the pork buns? Yeah, <laughs> the pork buns were really nice, um, and the. Um, Toffee apples were quite interesting, um, something that we, we didn't expect from you guys today, so well done. Wonderful, I'm moving along. How do you feel that everyone's team went? The sausage was brilliant. Every flavour came up from the dish, spot on. This is what I would have. Cooking techniques wise was perfect. Nothing was burned, it's well seasoned, and I um, really enjoyed it. Uh, well, the downside again was the roti john. As for me, I'm from Malaysia as well. I eat a lot of roti johns. Maybe the bucket was a bit too thick and I wouldn't have used a rye out or a wholemeal. Yeah, but other than that, it was, was a good job, good effort, four dishes on time, good presentation. Yeah. Well done. And moving on to breadstick? Pork bun was the favourite. Good amount of flavour, spot on, nice. The dough was, the bun was cooked perfectly. All right, nothing oozed out, stayed perfectly inside, was nice, really enjoyed it. Toffee apple also, something interesting, I, we didn't expect that again, but was really good, was nice. Wonderful, and how do you feel? Um, yeah, we are pretty even with the, with the whole judges team, so my favourite as well was the sausage. Really amazing flavours there with the, with the lemongrass that came through. Um, really interesting as well, you could see the knife skills, uh, whoever chopped um, the ingredients there. Everything was very uniform. It was very interesting to see. Um, for me as well, on the downside, it was probably the roti chon. Um, yeah, the bread was a little bit thick. It was a bit on the dry side. Uh, but overall, great. It was really good food. All right, as we suspect, it may be very tight at the top. Shelly, let's get a final number. So the final numbers were Yvonne, 81. Brad, 80. Oh! <laughs> Congratulations, a huge round of applause for Vaughn. Just edging out Brad there. Extremely tight. We might have to go to aggregate for the final round. Anyway, we've had three episodes down. All right, settling, settling down. The rivalry, it never dies. Uh, we've been three episodes down and the lead is Yvonne 2 to Brad 1, but it is ever so close and we have one more episode for Brad to square the margin and perhaps on aggregate even take the lead. Let's see how we go this time next week with Pressure Cooker. <laughs>